Tony, who went to Cabaret with me the other night. Wasn't that a great show? If you're in London, you guys go to the Kit Kat Club and see Cabaret while Eddie Redmond and Jesse Buckley are doing it. It fucking blew my mind. And Tony's too. You're all wasting time. I left an amethyst crystal, crystal for you once in Philly about six years back. Did you get it? I'm sure that I did. And I'm sure that I venerate it. What's my favorite tarot deck? Um, just the writer that I learned on when I was like five or six. Can I get a light? Do you have a light? I'm not smoking. Um, who's your favorite artist at the moment? Um, hold on, I'll tell you. Hold on. Um, wait. Oh, I know. She's a white cube artist based in London. Her name is Rachel Kneebone, and she does everything in porcelain. And Michael Armitage, who's also a white cube. I mean, he's fucking mind-blowing. Um... Would you ever do a musical? I did a musical. I did Kansas City Choir Boy. Have you listened to Blue Bannisters? No, I didn't listen to Blue Bannisters. Um, what shampoo do you use? Um, I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, is that the jazz cabinet? No, I don't smoke weed, you guys. I don't. Uh, I never did. Do I like Alice in Chains? Yeah, I really have. For years, had this guilty pleasure of. Um, Alice in Chains Unplugged, and I love Jerry Cantrell. Yes, I do like Alice in Chains. Can you touch some advice for mental health? Personally helps you stay motivated. Yes, I grayscale my phone. I stay the fuck offline. Um, I go, go on your phone, if you have an iPhone, and moderate your screen time, and, and you'll say, oh no, I'll take it down to three hours a day. It sounds like a lot, right? Yeah, you watch. Like, I had to w observe that I was online eight hours nine hours and so now I've disabled everything it took like a village to get me on here it's your time you're wasting do you want to ask me about my record or what or my book favorite 90s fashion trend American apparel ads um okay best thing you found with anxiety like I said get the fuck offline and also I chant so Go to SGI USA or UK or Germany and you can learn about this fantastic Orthodox Buddhism. You guys, I have like five minutes left. What genre is the new record? That's a good question. Um, not alt country at all. You know how um, Beyonce has a um, uh, alter ego named Sasha Fierce? But she lets Sasha Fierce out. I have an alter ego too. And my alter ego plays alt country. And her name is Cricket Nordstrom. And we don't fucking let her out of the closet. Alt country, I love it. I listen to it. The genre is not alt country. There's only one Lucinda. I don't want to be on third van. Like Cricket Nordstrom. This is one of my big secrets. Cricket Nordstrom has been with me, I don't know, a long time. But yeah, no. My alt country alter ego. I even found myself looking at a pair of like 1940s old cowboy boots. And going, gosh, those are so nice. And then... Fuck no, Cricket, you can't have those. Um, love to hear more about my book. Okay, um, when I first got this deal from HarperCollins, which was forever ago, like a decade ago, um, I thought I was broke because we were being so gaslit. By broke, I mean no subway fare. I don't mean not money for La Boutons. I mean no rent. So I took this um, book deal and I didn't want to write. And ladies don't write books. And Liz Taylor never wrote a book. And Sharon Stone never wrote a book. So I just kind of let it sat around. Took a lot of money from them because they only give you a little up front. Pretty small advance, really, considering what they're now getting. Um, and uh, I was f uh, matched with a guy who was ill-fitting for me. Um, and then we fell out. Um, and then I had to pay him a lot of money. And then I was matched with a co-writer who's excellent. And I still didn't want to write the book. So I wasn't in recovery yet. So I was like, okay, I'll tell you this stuff. And well, at one point, Alex, his name, he looked at me and was like, do you lie to your therapist? And I was like, no, why? I wouldn't lie to my therapist. I don't have a therapist. T.S. I then went immediately and got a therapist who I don't lie to. But he goes, well, because like, there's a lot of lies. I'm like, yeah, no. I know. So then I got into recovery about four years ago. I got clean and uh, did go to that therapist who I never lie to. Um, but, you know, I'm in this program of recovery. And one of the things 
that we say in our promises, you know, you will no longer fear economic insecurity. You will appreciate the wreckage of your past. I was like, yeah, no, that's never happening. And you know, you know, I read this book. So in the, in the book, there's like literally no sex. Like my sexual persona is like this mimsy Methodist victimy Virgin Mary. Like there's a scene where when I was a little kid, I gave Ted Nugent a blow job. This is well known. Um, I was like 14. And um, I have no trauma from it, and I am fine with that. But I read this book called King Kong Theory, which is this punk, queer, uh, feminist fucking fire. And it was banned in France, I think, but it took 16 years to get into English and fucking read it. It was like taking ayahuasca. And I was like, you know what? Like, all I cared about when I was standing in the line was like my jaw was going to hurt and like what was I getting out of it? A bad Ted Nugent show. Like my point is I was like just put the sex in. So I think Harper's will be really happy because I'm now gangster which matches who I am. So it was like this kind of mimsy. Also I was really um, self-conscious about my socioeconomic background because uh, I just like a rags to riches narrative leave it alone and no my grandparents were obscenely rich and you know on my mother's side I come from like some kind of wacky wealth and I opted out of it but um you know I hear the word trust fund and some of you know that I had a small one but I get really triggered like oh god everybody's gonna think I could go to Yale um it was small it's five hundred dollars a month but I decided to put that all that privilege that I had access to back in it and now it's really fun and the idea of getting out there and shilling my past to you guys kind of makes me sick like shilling my present shilling my future I'm good with shilling my past I'm just not a fan of that okay we're almost done so that was that did England influence you as a writer oh yeah oh yeah you know like to like the what is the first line in the New Testament John said you know in the beginning was the word you know, like even at the worst grammar schools in this country, they teach them Shakespeare. And I'm just so grateful that I went to boarding school in New Zealand and learned a little of it in fourth form, even though I got expelled. But like, learned a little of it, learned how to write poetry, and then to come back here and they have laws. Do you guys know about that? Like, they have fucking laws in this country. Like, laws. The Britney thing would never happen here. It's crazy. So I, the most important thing that I do for myself every single day after I chant, help other newcomers, whatever, is read just even a little bit of poetry. Rilke, you know, Rumi, Baudelaire, whatever you want. Um, talking about what is very brave. What, Ted Nugent Bojo? <laughs> Please. I talked about it on Howard Stern. Um, do you, I, you have a lot of memories of living in Dublin. Lots of them. There, I put a lot of those in the book. Like just, you know, my father turned out to be the drug dealer and not the professor. <laughs> so I was walking around Trinity a lot and I would go in the long room and look at the Book of Kells and go into Bewley's before it was like in airports because that freaks me out. With like, and then you'd sit in a kind of communal thing with like a preacher and a old lady and eat a cake. Um, okay. Hi, Ireland. Okay, literally you have two minutes and I'm out. Yes, Maya, she'll have a new record. Yes. Um, love to put you in recovery. Here's the thing about recovery, though. We have these traditions that I've never paid attention to. And one of those traditions is just not to talk about it. And I have friends that have really, really, really remained sober because they don't talk about it. So I will tell you as much, in as much I'm in a program of recovery. That's about as far as I want to go with that. Because now I'm like, in order to stay in recovery, I follow the traditions and I do the steps that we are told to do in my program of recovery. What's the theme of the new album? Well, I mean, what do you think? But this is the good news. I'm on a media blackout. So with all press requests, I've just been like, such a cliche. It's all on the record, man. It's all on the record. Okay, what else do you want? Will I ever collaborate with Lana? You guys stop. Um, you know, I don't do collabs. I do, um, I would write with another person. I feel like older people, like thirsty, doing these collabs with younger pop stars is just not my vibe. Um, but I storied it earlier where we did collab as we did a pinky swear in our media blackout because no one gets to tell my story but me. And no one gets to interpret me but me. So that's as much as I'll say about that. 
All right, one more question to set. Um, who's my favorite actor at the moment? I love this girl that was in Cabaret the other night, um, Jessie Buckley. She's also with uh, Olivia Col Col Coleman on the Netflix show um, that Maggie Gyllenhaal, Lost Daughter, directed. Um, who else? I also love Licorice Pizza. If you haven't seen Licorice Pizza, go see Licorice Pizza. It's so fucking good. Um, okay, that's about it. You guys are almost done. Anything else? Let me see. Favorite new band? Oh, um, I love Wolf Owl, Alice. No, I'm not giving you song titles. Are you kidding? Uh, May is just when this record's coming. Collaborate with Madonna and when? Yes. Um, Snowden, yeah, movie suggestions. Well, you can't go see Licorice Pizza. I don't know. Um, the making of... I'm not making questions up. Favorite fashion editorial? Steven Mizell's Supermodels and Rehab. That was amazing. I'm telling you both. Um, okay. Wow. Wow. Le robe à mon. Okay. Ask me something interesting. Okay, you guys get it together. I'm going to get something to drink. I'll be right back. Not asking me anything interesting. Collab with Lana. Please stop. Please stop. If you don't want me to talk to you. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, you guys have a minute. My perfume. Oh, I think it's um spring. This is um. This is the control. Oh, wait. So they they send you like they shear it out. That's a control. And then this is Mod B six two. That doesn't smell as good. I don't like it. Um, yeah. I think it comes out in spring. Scent beauty. Let's see what else. The top, um, the top notes um, are no, like orange blossom, freesia, and then jasmine sandback. Those are the three top notes. Um, what am I reading at the moment? I'm reading a Leonard Cohen book, Young. Um, this book, Room at the Top, it's an old, it was a movie with Lawrence Harvey, really good. It was on um, David Bowie's 100 Favorite Books. There's a book about David Bowie's 100 Favorite Books, and then you read the book about his favorite 100 books, and then it makes you want to read his 100 Favorite Books, so that's one of David Bowie's favorite 100 books. <clears throat> Someone just asked me my favorite fragrance. Somebody else can answer you, you know. Um, all right, I think we're done. And um, that's what it. Thanks, you guys. This was my first live stream, and um, I will uh, try it again some other time. Uh, how do I sign out? Thanks a lot, you guys. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Bye.